The second annual Baltimore International Black Film Festival returns this weekend, October 7th through 12th. BIBFF's theme is Real Unity. As over 80 features, four short programs, documentaries, and web series from over 14 different countries showcase African Americans, the African diaspora, and the SGL LGBT community. We have in studio today the founder and communications manager of the festival, Ken Moore and Jacob Pierce. Gentlemen, welcome, and thanks for making the time to travel down 495 to be on the show. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes. Definitely. My pleasure. So, congratulations. This is the uh, second time around, so that means you must have been doing something right the first time, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And we did it so well the first time, we decided to do it in less than a year this time around. So, this is actually our second festival in 10 months. Wow. The first festival was December of last year. And I think we'll be on a one-year cycle after this year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I know how running a film festival is, yeah, it, it, wow, 10 months, that's a quick turnaround. All right, so Ken, what inspired you to start the festival? It's interesting. I've, I've been a long-time enthusiast of films. I've, I pretty much love all genres of film. And what we wanted to do with our organization, SOGA, which we founded a few short months before the first festival was, we wanted to bring a different event to the city of Baltimore. We wanted to kind of expand the horizons of the scope of what our community was engaged in, in terms of activities. So we tried to kind of marry those interests of loving films with an event that could bring the community together in some form or fashion. Yeah, now definitely, especially last year, I and mean, I'm just thinking about this, th was this um, with, you know, the riots and everything like that, um, was that big or? Well, with this year? Oh, uh, last year, like, was, was it good to have a positive uh, festival? Yeah, well, we've, I think that's always been what we've been about. If I can just back up a little bit about last year's festival, the theme for last year's festival was Bridging the Gap. Mm. And what we wanted to do was bring groups together that might have seen differences, perhaps where we don't really differ as much. So we wanted to bridge the gap between our young people, activists, our seniors, the LGBT community, and we wanted to kind of be a more inclusive kind of environment, create a more inclusive environment where we could all work together and, and kind of bridge those divides. Okay. Cool. All right, so Jacob, could you just tell us a little bit about what you do as a con communications manager? Oh goodness, you might as well call that a <laughs> renaissance person. You know, the as a child, seeing an, there's a picture of an octopus and he's at a desk and he's doing the phone, he's doing the TV, <laughs> he's doing the, I do all those things. So pretty much um, my responsibility has been in the past and with this film festival is to just find um, a target audience for each film and just being able to identify an eye of okay who could benefit from this film are definitely a different audience that might prefer that film over the other and it's been very interesting okay with 80 feature films you know on the showcase that, that's not an easy feat how did you guys come up with the, the programming that's a lot to keep up with okay just a I think slight correction it's 80 films total okay. that is inclusive of shorts web series and feature length films. It will be quite an undertaking for <laughs> yeah, 80, that's what I was, that's what I was 80 feature films. So yeah, so, but uh, we, essentially we've been traveling the country at various different film festivals, meeting directors face to face, gaining some insight into their films, screening their films in real time, mm. and then having conversations with them about potentially bringing their films to the city of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. That was how we started initially in around January, February of this year. And then around April is when we went online with our festival submission process. And that kind of happens automatically. So we use a nationally recognized festival submission platform and filmmakers were able to directly submit their films to us in all different categories. We kind of let them know what we wanted and they were able to give us shorts, features, web series, and nice. we called those and came up with our selections of films for this year's festival. And let me tell you, this guy is no joke. This guy can watch <laughs> 12, 13 hours straight of film, <laughs> short wow. web series. I'm like, you better than me after two, three hours. Let me take a break. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I, I, I can probably give you maybe 
five, maybe, but I don't know <laughs> about 12. Wow, you're a beast. <laughs> All right, so obviously you take it seriously because going yes. to these different festivals and trying to sequester the different films, that's awesome. Yes. Um, why do you think it's important to have SGL LGBT stories on the big screen? Well, one thing is what we definitely endeavor to do is to give as many voices a place and allow as many voices to feel and know that they are recognized. And I strongly believe that that's the way that we come together when we have settings where we can all have those conversations and demystify, if you will, these notions that we have that we are so different. Mm. So a film festival to me was a great way of creating that platform where we would not feel as though we were so disconnected and that's what the organization endeavored to do, to build upon this platform and we hope in subsequent years we'll really be able to expand and have as many different voices through film create what we call real unity, R-E-E-L, unity. That's the theme for this year's festival and we've already kind of exemplify that, if you will, because we've brought together artists, we've brought together technical people and volunteers, and we've expanded beyond what we did last year. So we're already kind of manifesting that unity that we endeavor to bring to the community. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So uh, what are some of the films that you want to highlight that we can expect to see this year? Oh, goodness. <clears throat> Too many. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. So, well, we have films that are going to definitely make you laugh, films that are gonna make you think, films that may touch you in other different ways. One film that comes to mind is a film that's very poignant, if you will, because of what happened recently in the city of Baltimore, is a film called Driving While Black. Mm. And it's actually a comedy. <laughs> so from the title, you would think, oh, this is a serious matter, but it definitely uses satire and comedy in such a way that you have, to give you a little bit of the story, there's a pizza delivery guy who's living in LA, it's set in LA, and you see some of the travails of different circumstances and situations that he had to deal with from his youth, mm -hmm. from being a teenager, and then now as a young adult delivering pieces, mm -hmm. and some of the stereotypes, he, both he and his friends and the community at large have to deal with vis-a-vis -vis the LA Police Department. Yeah, and looking at the trailer, like you said, it, it looks like it's really funny because the thing about the thing about humor that I love is that you can always put truth into the laughs, you know. So that one definitely looks good. Yes, and it's uh, I'm not going to give anything away because again, yeah, I watched those 13 hours of film, but <laughs> I typically I don't want to know anything about the film before I see it. So I like to enjoy the experience as it's happening, but it's very cleverly done in terms of how they use suspense and drama and a little mystery along the way, and you don't know which way the story is going, and I think that's what creates a great piece. Mm. So we're definitely excited to screen that film, and it's actually, as are most of the films, this is the first time it's been in the region. It, ne it has not screened in Baltimore. Okay. Uh, typically, as a general rule, we want films that are less than two years old, so they, they would not have been made less than, they would have been made after January 24th of this year. Mm. Uh, excuse me, I should say January 2014 <laughs> of this year. And so, yeah, so these are films that are kind of hot on the festival trail, if you will. <laughs> They're kind of on this, the festival circuit right now. So yeah. Driving While Black is definitely one of those films. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other ones? I know you got An American Ascent. Uh, this documents the first African-American ex uh, expedition to tackle uh, Denali. You're going to go ahead and... Yes, yes, An American Ascent. That's actually, there are nine mountain climbers who nine African-American mountain climbers who on the 100 year anniversary of the first kind of climb of uh, Denali, they came together to for the first time have an all African-American climbing crew, if you will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly the, the right terminology. We don't hike too much. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But um, one great thing that they do is they definitely infuse history and it is a documentary, so they mm. infuse some history, even from the civil rights era, they're able to kind of blend that into what, is, what, what it means for them as they have this quest to, to kind of break stereotypes and do something that's probably not as expected. So I loved it because it is one of those stretch 
types of films. It, it, mm. it, it calls you to do something beyond what you may think you can do. So in terms of these conversations that we like to have and try to spawn in the community, this is a great one because you can have folks be inspired in such a way that they can believe that they can achieve something beyond which they might have thought they could necessarily do. Okay. All right. Uh, any other hot ones on the lineup? Uh, yes, yes. You want to speak one. to one? Yes. <laughs> um, so The Invented People, Echoes of Cape Verde, that is a film that comes from a, is he Brazil? A Brazilian director? A uh, Spanish director. Spanish director, I'm sorry. But it's set in Cape Verde, yes. Set in Cape Verde. And yeah. a lot of people don't know about Cape Verde culture. Of course, there are some in D.C., but definitely the bulk of them, I believe, are in Massachusetts. Yeah, there's a lot of Cape Verde Yeah, authors. But pretty much this film is about a jazz festival that was created in Sao Vicente, and it just shows of the history of Cape Verde and its people. And how they put on this great jazz festival. Okay, so okay. one question is, what would you say is one of the most challenging films that the audience can expect to see this year? Ooh, there's a couple. Uh, we have a film, actually, it's called Silent Brave, and that deals with uh, military sexual abuse. Mm. And it's actually from a director here in Maryland, and it's making its North American premiere. It actually would have been a world premiere, but she actually just screened it in Paris last week. Oh, wow. And so that was a world premiere, but we're excited to bring this short film dealing with uh, a woman's response to having been in that position where she had this a military brethren, if you will, violate in that, her in that way. Mm -hmm. And again, it's, it's, that's a challenging film, but again, if we're gonna grow, if we're gonna heal, if we're gonna evolve, if we're gonna truly connect, we wanna, sometimes you have to have those challenging conversations. Right. And it, it's not necessarily always nice or pleasant, but we could be better for it if we grow and, and really heal in the right way. Mm. Mm. And then what do you think, because this really sounds like, uh, I mean, everything that you said so far, I'm like, <laughs> I want to see that, I want to see that. Uh, yes. What do you think will be like one of the most entertaining films people who will check out? Oh. Christmas Wedding Baby. Okay, yeah, that's a good um, one. That's a good one, that's a, a very comedic one. And I think our opening uh, feature, Knucklehead, mm. um, typically because it is about uh, mental illness, uh, in the African-American community, and when we actually saw it the first time in New York, mm -hmm. it was screened and the uh, reaction of audiences was a little bit different. Mm. So definitely you know of a different audience, so it'll be interesting to see how they perceive it. Yeah. So I really... And that one has Alfred Woodard in it, mm -hmm. right? Yes, it stars Alfred Woodard and Jabinga Akanabe, who's an alumnus of The Wire. Uh, a lot of people would know him as Chris uh, mm -hmm. from The Wire, so he, he definitely gives an amazing performance. It's, it's a first time director, Ben Bowman, who directed that piece, and we're excited to open the festival for that. I think another one would be our closing film. It's a film called Romeo is Bleeding. Mm. And in this particular film, you have two warring gangs in Richmond, California. <laughs> who, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <"Didn't> <laughs> In Richmond, California. Okay. And they decide instead of the continuing fighting each other, they actually reimagine Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. And you have the warring woman, a young girl from one gang, and the warring or would be or had been fighting from the other. And they come together in spoken word and poetry hmm. and rewrite War Romeo and Juliet. They put on a production, and it's the, this is a documentary, so they actually, this is a real situation of what happened in wow. Richmond. California, and they decide to come together and use theater and the arts as a means of coming together and stopping the violence. Wow, well this this really does sound <laughs> like it's gonna be a great weekend of films. <laughs> yes. All right, can you guys let the viewers know uh, where they can find out more information about the festival, buy tickets, all that good stuff? Okay, absolutely. So the festival will be October 7th through the 12th in Baltimore. We start at the historic Charles Theater, and we end at the University of Baltimore Learning Commons. You can find out information at www.biff.com or you can call our ticket uh, provider at 844-424-2331. Again, that's 844-424-2331. Definitely, we love to have as many folks come out and experience this. I think we've 
put together something that's very unique. Um, one thing I'd like to say real quickly is what we do as well to kind of spawn those conversations, we typically put films together that are different. So we'll pair with all of our films, with the exceptions of our opening and closing, we pair a short with a feature. So every time you come to a film, you're going to see two. Mm -hmm. and, but they're going to be two kind of di different films yeah. and it, it creates that environment for you to think and have something a totally so you may laugh you may <laughs> you may see an LGBT film you may see something that's a religious based film but we want to pair them in ways so that our audience doesn't just come and stay divided we want to even oh, use the God. pairings yeah. of the films during the festival to bring us together and to really foster that real unity all right, mm -hmm. awesome. Well, Ken, Jacob, thanks for coming on the Thank show. Thank you so much for Good having us. Good luck this weekend yes. with the film <laughs> festival. It sounds awesome. Yes, appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Remember to check out BIBFF.com for more information. Don't go anywhere. We'll talk with co-founder of Sunday Night Singles, Janessa Jackson. We'll be right back.